So good evening. I wanted to do a video response for, uh, and pardon me if I misspell your or mispronounce your name, Jet Jet Sathanas, who posted five days ago and asking the question, "What does the spine line do on the drum?" In fact, I'll just read out the whole thing. It would be really awesome if you would do a video on spine location on the head. I have a made in Pakistan MIP drum at the moment, but I will soon be getting a drum made. But it will only be able to, I'll only be able to afford one drum for the foreseeable future. So I want it to be perfect for me. Thanks and love the videos and keep them coming. So first of all, thank you, Jed. Um, and yes, having your first really good drum is a big deal. Uh, my first piece of advice on that is that talk to the, ma the maker of the drum. Most of these guys are not big companies. They are individuals making them by themselves or doing it within a very small design team maybe two or three people at most and they're doing it they're doing it out of their homes out of their workshops and the best thing to do is to contact makers and tell them what kind of sound you want and a good way to do that would be to you know tell them what kind of players you like the sound of or tell them what kind of sounds you want and they're going to be able to break it down into a set of a la carte choices and suggestions, but they'll be able to help make a drum better suited for you. But your question about what does the spine line do? Um, that is actually a more complicated question. And I've answered that before in a previous old video that's not on YouTube. It's on the Facebook page, but I want this to be a better video. So I'll try to give you a little more clarity on this. And this is based on my experience, me talking to other drummers in Toronto, but also talking with um, Bryn Collier from Finnegan Hill. Um, old notes that I took after chatting with Christian Hedwig Shack a few years ago, and Seamus O'Kane, and uh, Rob Forkner as well. So this is sort of an, um, a synthesis of that. So the first thing, does the spine location matter? Well, uh, chatting with Brett Collier about this has been mainly about the, the, the spine location can be a bit arbitrary, and sometimes it's not arbitrary. In the Scanamar, and by the way, I'll link the, 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 the I'll, I'll send the links in the video underneath, under here. Um, the first one I would reference you to is the Scanamara video on YouTube that has one of Ronan O'Snoody's drum lessons, and it is uh, entitled Belly vs. Back. I think it's episode 13. And in that episode, he compares belly cut skin versus back cut skin. In the video, um, he mentions that belly skin is more flexible. And that kind of makes sense compared to the back, which he says is the pitter patter. In, 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 you're never going to see, obviously, spine line on the side. You're going to see it on the back. And he says also, if you get a, uh, depending on where on the back you get, whether it's down on the on the hinds or up in the wings, as he calls it, um, you can get certain idiosyncrasies into the skin. And idiosyncrasies just means things that make that skin unique in those things, it's little bits of personality process that just pops up there. Um, he makes one really good conversational part about it where he talks about getting the piece down by the arse of the goat, if you ask for it, as he says, if you ask for it. And it makes a flat, dead, thonk sort of a sound that he couldn't really imitate on his drum because it didn't have it. So that would follow the spine line as well. That would be at the bottom of the spine line. The bottom of the spine line. But when chatting with people like Rob, uh, Rob Forkner and Brent Collier, for them it is more to do with how the skin and the drum is processed and put together in construction. Bauron is a very simple instrument, but because of little things like construction design, it makes big changes at the end. So what you end up having is if you want a big sound, get a big drum. Get a deep drum if you want something that has a tumier, doomier sort of sound and get something that's narrower in frame depth, uh, in shell frame depth, for something a little more boxy sounding. It's all going to reverberate a little bit differently. But for the most part, you know, in my experience, it is 
yes, the idiosyncrasies of the skin, so that would include the spine, and especially with belly versus back, I do personally find that a cut from the belly is usually more flexible, except if you're comparing different types of skin. So if you're doing belly goat skin, the thin cut versus one that's a much thicker cut, guess which one's going to be more pliable? But guess which one's going to be louder and fuller? Same thing as like if I have, you know, a drum that has goat skin versus kangaroo and they're both back cuts, I can guarantee you that kangaroo skin is going to bellow more. Just simply because it's a more elastic skin by its own nature. You know, I actually do have some examples of those idiosyncrasies. So this is one drum that has the spine line on it. And according to Brent Collier at Finnegan Hill, a lot of players will play, if they're playing top end, they might line it up with the top of the spine. And there is a little difference. There is a little bit of this stiffness and rigidity, but it is not, as I previously, and I think mistakenly, maybe to a degree of not really understanding what it was meant, um, that's how they get the extra high pops out versus pops done in a non more like a more homogeneous area it's a little bit softer sounding what i may have failed to mention better is that i, I believe what i said mistakenly was that it, it was thicker along the spine that might be true it also may not be true um, it is far more down to how the skin is scraped and whatnot if you've ever picked up some of the cheaper walton's drums um, you know that they have a very rough back and you have to sand them down to an even thickness. Otherwise you're going to have problems tuning it and keeping it in tune as well as just the sound on the back of it. The second thing is that most of the time when you're playing, you're already creating idiosyncrasies to the skin thickness by simply having your hand on the back. So there is going to be a degree of sound change having the spine playing a spine sided drum but if it's already a very pliable skin then you're gonna have bass and you're gonna have a lot of other stuff that comes out of it so if you're a more percussive player maybe what you're looking for is something that's more of a thicker harder skin rather than something that's and maybe something more like this which is only a four inch drum and if you're someone who likes a nice tumier sound you're probably going to want something more like this which is a six inch deep drum this also is a phenomenally idiosyncratic skin and i play this um, in two different ways and it's because this is the same thickness all the way through but this is a stiffer sharper sound and this is a more pliable more malleable sound down here so if i'm playing for example how am i going to there we go so if I'm playing something like from here, I will have up here be that dead spot if I want to have high pops. Or if I'm doing a lot of walking bass, I'm going to do it this way. Because I don't want to have a whole lot of idiosyncrasy. I want smoothness. And that is something you're going to have to learn. With every drum, every drum has its personality, I like to call it. It's those imperfect things that map out on the skin, and you're going to learn how to play and get those sounds. It is something that it's hard to control as a maker, and it's harder to control as a person buying one. People do sell instruments like these because the skin just doesn't agree with them. Someone else might pick it up. Versus something like this, which is almost completely homogenous. There is very little in the name of difference on here. I doubt even the camera can pick this up except right here where are you right down here and i don't know if you can see it it's got a little texture to it that is just something in the skin itself but i know it makes a harder thonkier sound when i normally play this drum i occupy it at the bottom so if i need to play up a quick snappy up hit i snap it off that hard bit and then i come down from the top but that's just how I like to play it. A drum like this, I might actually try to play it in more all over it, in different positions. But for drums like you know this one, I'm only really going to play it 
two different ways. Or like on my TR head drum, which has the skin at like, like two fifths, I specifically play it in one way and only one way because for whatever reason that has the best response for me so when players like um and i believe it was johnny mcdonough johnny Ringo mcdonough mentioned that you have to kind of find the spot and he turns the drum and turns the drum but instead of turning it and trying to get an even play all over the skin he finds the spot where he wants to play and then keeps playing it until that skin's knocked out. So for him, it's about localizing it and then sticking with what he likes and keeping it a habit and then going by that habit. And for him, that works really, really well. That also works for me when I play my TR, which is a very, very thick, hard, um, and the spine is located. He would normally play with the spine closer to his body and lined it. I actually leave the spine sticking out here because I like that slightly deader sound with mallet tippers to just off the front and then come back to play in the center. To me, that seems to work. Um, it's how I get the most out of that drum. Otherwise, I am actually hand playing it, but that's a totally different story, not the most welcome thing at a session. Um, so the spine line does give you some advantages. However, or, or not advantages, but some idiosyncratic sounds. That also may not happen. On some skins, there is no difference, even with the spine line there that's clearly pronounced. Some skin cuts have a very pronounced spine, some of them don't. And depending on how that is, it's a bit of a crapshoot with a degree of, of, of knowledge and science on how to get certain sounds, and how to get certain effects. And that is a big, big maybe. So the answer to the spine question, in my opinion, especially how I've played it, is that sometimes it matters, and sometimes it honestly doesn't matter. Um, I can take my Finnegan Hill kangaroo skin drum, which has a spine down the center, and it's usually put down the center to make as much of a, hom like a homogenous sort of effect. It's symmetrical. You know, and the drum always vibrates symmetrically. Um... That's the bassiest drum I have, and it's a second smallest drum I have. And it's got kangaroo skin, and it's not a super thick skin, it's like a medium, maybe. So, for me, that was the sound I wanted. So what I did is that, I what I wanted is I actually contacted uh, Finnegan Hill, and over the course of a month, profiled down to the specs that I wanted. And then that was it. Then I placed my order, and then, you know, several months later, it's there. You know, fantastic. And that was the sound for me. still is the sound for me. And the majority of how I play. So, it, it, it's, it's tough. Because there's a few things you have to think about. Size of the drum. How it's built and put together. The tuning ring. The skin and how you're playing it. Those four things matter so much. There is a big difference. between the sounds you have when you're playing two totally different tippers. You're playing, you, you the individual player, contribute, and this is just my general, general out of the blue estimate, I think that about 65% of the time, you're the influence. And the rest of it is, is the construction of the drum and you gotta work within those limitations. So, my answer to your spine question is, yes, it matters, but only <laughs> if the drum constructed and how the skin is physically, physically actually provides a difference. You know, it, what's really cool is that Rob Forkner developed um, some tabla type drums, and especially on the small drums, and he'll use you like a, a, a ring of skin on the inside. And we already do this. People who tape their drums with electrical tape or with like vinyl taping are already creating that difference right there. You running your hand up and down the back of the drum to get pitch change difference also does it. Um, one of the cool things I like, especially with some of Forkner's small drums, is that he puts a, a, a 
tablet ring and a central pad. And that's really cool because what the central pad does, and in this case it completely matters because it was designed to matter, is that when you play over the center, you're getting more highs and deeper lows, and you're cutting out some of the middle, just like on a tabla, except he's not using that, 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 um, that mud mixture. He's using skin to achieve that because you can't put a, a, like a real tabla tab, like pad on the drum. It just doesn't work that way. You kill a lot of your sound doing that way. It certainly doesn't make it Irish sounding. But you can do do this with just that that with, with playing on how to work those frequencies. I'll also include into uh, the list below in the description below a link to a circular membrane modes page. So for those of you who are math whizzes and I am not, um, and want a, a calculator to calculate stuff. I can provide you with that. I'll just I'll, I'll, I'll include that in there as well. So to, to to bring it all back, what was the question? What does the spine line do? It may, number one, provide idiosyncrasies and things that add character to the drum, where people will either use it to attain specific sounds, or on the other side, nothing. It's not even an aesthetic question. It's more so about how how the drum skin is skin is, is, is prepared. One of the best things I heard was from Seamus O'Kane um, in a in a in a, in a what is it, a, a, a TG four interview, um, saying talking about the use of lambeg skins and them being scraped very thinly, and he says the thinness for its own sake is not what it was for. It's the uniformity to get all the fat off of it so that there's no differences, so that the sound rings clear and sharp. Nice, clear sort of sounds. And that has nothing to do with spine placement. That has everything to do with thickness of skin. Now, there might be some slight differences in stiffness, but for the most part, the makers building these drums are taking that into consideration. So, hopefully... This answers some of your, hopefully this answers your question. And again, if you are buying your first really good drum, research it, take your time and talk, send emails, call up people who make these instruments and ask them how to get those sounds. Forkner asks people to do that right on his website. You know, Brent Collier asks that, you know, um, over email or, or phone or whatnot. Um, you know, Christian Hedvigshack is a really good example of a maker who literally has a diary of what each drum is supposed to sound. So if you want a bit of a more old school hard sound, you get a TR head. If you want something that's very, very flexible and multi-use, then you're probably going to look at an MLS um, 2 model with a change head. So you have one drum frame, but you can buy separate heads, you know, and, and whatnot. Or if you want something that's like a development from the Seamus O'Kane models, get an RWE. Or if you want something that's very, very, very modern, but on a budget that will last a long time, get a Coraline Universal or something like that. That sort of thing. He actually has his a lot of menu type, whereas a lot of the other makers, they're going to make a la carte stuff. They're going to make completely custom to your order. And then they'll give you a quote and you work that out with them. So hopefully this helps. I know this was a long video, but it's such a simple question and there's so many yeah buts, yeah buts about it. So I hope this helps. I hope the drum you eventually purchase is something you're happy with and hopefully something you can be proud of and, and enjoy for a very long time. Thanks for the question, Jet. Have a good night.